all of my, um, well, Melissa's here, but the other two are, are not. So let's start with uh, two seconds around Lorinda. Two seconds. Just all something you learned in bold yesterday. Um, oh my gosh, where do I start? Two seconds. Uh, reiterating the bold laws. I like that. Um, Wait, re reiterating what? The bold laws. Okay, which bold law did you choose this week? And what does that mean to you? <laughs> uh, I changed it from last week, so give me a second. Don't listen to your limiting mindset. And what that means to me is um, make a bigger effort to reach and push through my fear to get my goals met. Okay. Beautiful. So, Beautiful. Uh, so you're, you're going to be pushed, if I can give you some unsolicited advice on this, you're, you're, you're going to be pushed on that every single day. Right? Yes. Um, and that type of thought is, uh, in my opinion, kind of gives, like it, it's, um, it seems very daunting, right? It seems like a long-term goal, like a really big goal. What I would encourage you to do is try to chunk it down a little bit. And because it's hard to like win at that every day, right? So how do you win using that mindset every day? Meaning like, what is the, what is the way in which it could be something really small that you say to yourself or read or adopt each day so that you make sure that the limiting beliefs are not getting the best of you? So I will tell you what attending bone you're right, before attending both, even before meeting you, that would have been a very, like you said, a daunting task. But just in going through bold and taking the steps, I know that it's gonna be, you know, one bite. Oh, excuse me. It's gonna be um, bite by bite. So my first thought in writing that was, okay, make that one call, make that one call, make that one call. Like Tony was saying, 1% um, better each, yep. each day. And so if I equate this to the calls, which is what um, I was thinking about when I wrote it, making those calls, um, it would be making that one extra call, making that one extra call. And it, like the other day when I sat down, I didn't realize I had contacted 128 people until I sat down and started going back through my checkoffs because I wrote people's names down on a sheet of paper and I started checking them off and when I went back and counted, it was 128 people. I never expected that. And so when you, you mentioned it, I was like, oh, wow, I got through 128. And that was the only reason is because I started, I wrote them down and then when I finished the call or whether I could contact them or not, I put a check saying, hey, I at least touched them. And so, yeah, that's 1% more I just want to take a. I just want to take a moment to make sure everyone heard that loud and clear. Um, <laughs> you... I assume that's the first time you've ever called 128 people in a day. Is that fair to say? That, <laughs> that is, I mean, that honestly, that's life changing right there. I mean, you, you, you've not, you had not done it before. You, nope. you never thought it was possible. Nope. <laughs> no one ever around you had suggested it. No one ever around you had shown you the results that they did it. Right. It's totally you. a foreign <laughs> idea. And then you found yourself committed to this project. And now it's like you, your rubber band has been stretched and it will never go back to the way it was, <laughs> right? So now if I were only, to- Only state, through laziness. I can tell you that now. Only through laziness and not being um, fully committed. Again, you're right. That's a, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that. That's a fair- Well, we're, we know that's not going to happen because you're both. Right. Uh, it's kind of like the, when somebody broke through the four-minute mile, then all yes. of a sudden it's doable, right? And that's yes. what you've done. I like that analogy. It was something like, I mean, it took like something like 50 years for the first person to do it. And then right after Bannister did it, there was like another 20 people that did it within a month. Right. But they needed somebody to do it first. Right? And that was shifting the mindset, right? It was the belief that they could do it because somebody proved they could do it. So their mindset got shifted. So you just shifted a whole bunch of mindsets. Linda. Exactly. You did. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, you, we are, we are, um, uh, we are, 
we are role models for, for everyone that happens to be paying attention, right? And my hope is you got a lot of people paying attention today. And, uh, you know, maybe they were modeled by Candace or me or whoever, and then that now they're modeling after you, right? So uh, the good news is you're still alive, right? You didn't get injured or anything after talking to 128 people. And the, the other good news is if I said, hey, all you got to do is talk to 15 to hit your outrageous goals, you'd be like, seriously? And I'm going to get paid 200 grand to do it? You got to be kidding me, right? So- um, can I just uh, add a couple Please. of pieces to that? Okay, so um, a couple of people, because I didn't really feel comfortable leaving messages because it's like, these people aren't going to remember me. So then I sent out uh, texts to the people who didn't pick up. And a couple of people pick up, you know, they text back question marks. One lady said, well, who are you? One lady um, said, you know what? I am so old. I don't remember. Can you refresh my memory of how, where we met? <laughs> I thought that was cute. And then one lady hey, you said, You and I were about to buy a house. I don't know if you recall that. Right. <laughs> so um, one lady um, bounced back. She said, I am so glad you reached out to me. I am. Uh, I just had knee surgery. Um, things were really bad. And your, your text was like a brush, of breath, a brush of fresh air. Thanks so much for checking on me. Um, a couple of my high school friends who I hadn't talked to in like maybe 30 years. Um, they bounce back. Hey, are you still doing real estate? Hey, we need to talk. So I'm definitely I'm picking up the phone for that guy. Um, but no, it, was refer- it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to get slammed with, who is this? Why are you calling? Why are you taking some stop? To me? That whole thing. So at, at least they tell you quickly that they don't deserve to be in your database. I mean, yes, this is, this is true. I, mean, I got a couple of wrong chart, numbers. Then, then that's okay. Just thank you for letting me know. I appreciate that. I, I, you can just come out of my database and I'll move on with life and you can move on with your life. No big deal. Right. At least one I don't stare at your name anymore. Yeah, I know. One last thing. Um, in my phone book, in my phone, um, there was a guy, Alonzo. So when I spoke to him initially, he said, yeah, me and my fiance. So when I called, he didn't pick up. But in my text to him, I addressed his fiance. So I was like, well, how are you and Dominique doing? And so when she text, well, the text went to him because I thought that was his number. And so she, when she texted back, she said, hi, this is um, Dominique. This is actually my number. And I said, oh, great. So I was so excited that I remembered to say, um, when we met, you were planning um, your life together with Dominique. And so when she bounced back, I guess that kind of let her know, one, there was no hanky-panky going on. And two, she really remembered um, in talking to my husband that oh she included me in everything so yeah that was really cool in That's her awesome. response back i um guys bold changes lives <laughs> and um you know that you never know when you're going to hear what you need to hear to to think to change in the way you're approaching a situation or the way you you um are, are thinking about something mentally and um you know we don't have time today but i could tell you 50 stories, me personally, about things that I've heard in bold that have changed my approach to things, including yesterday, right? So um, thank you for your for sharing that. Thank you for your commitment to your business. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, Crystal, but it sounded like yesterday you had a, a, a pretty a, a, a pretty important moment. Um, you know, it's just, it's all, you just got to allow yourself to be influenced. You see what I'm saying? Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I wasn't expecting that. I, I, um, you know, I've paid for, you know, deep dive seminars where you go in for eight to 10 hours a day and it's completely um, reprogramming uh, you, which is exactly what I need. I need to switch out the old operating system and upgrade it to the new operating system. So I was surprised. You know, I was surprised by the epiphany, uh, but it was definitely very welcoming because it has been um, like the elephant in the room uh, that everywhere I go, there it is. No, I don't see the pink elephant with spots when I did. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so and that, that was, And that by the way, that can good. be daunting and, too, right? You might have to push well, that elephant what, out one that's, little inch well, at a time. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's like everywhere I went, it was always there. So, um so, you know, it was really good, very freeing. And, you know, I woke up with a, a completely different energy this morning, even though I woke up 
two hours later than I normally do, which was still 5 a.m. But um, I still had a, a different energy and, and intensity. So I appreciate yeah. that. I mean, I your body did. was, your body and your mind were probably a bit overwhelmed. They needed that extra two hours to like kind of do whatever they do while you're sleeping, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I mean, <laughs> we know the body needs to, I mean, all the information that you take yeah. in throughout the day, unless you give yourself enough time to file it away properly, <laughs> it'll be very hard to retrieve it later. There you go. There you go. All right, let's jump right in. Thank you guys for Bill, sharing. Yeah. Bill, I have, I have to share one thing just quickly because this took me so by surprise. Tammy said yesterday that when solicitors call her, she, um, she, 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 she'll say, well, do you want to buy or sell a home? She turns it right back on them. Mm -hmm. And so I, as a lot of us do, I got a call yesterday for somebody selling me the next best thing for real estate. And I said, well, do you want to buy or sell a home? And I was doing it kind of smart alecky, but then she goes, you know what? She, she told me the story. She said, I had a dream home picked out. And by the time I got my ducks in a row, it was already under contract. And she goes, so I've just got discouraged and waiting. And I had a conversation with her about the cost of waiting. And I've got two agents now in Austin to hook her up with. And she's so excited she texted me last night so it was like that took me so by surprise and I won't be smart alecky about my approach anymore I'm just going to ask it in earnest because there's real people that are calling that's their job you know yeah I want to piggyback on that thank you thank you for that like that they that is their method of bringing home money to their family like they let's assume that they're they're genuine about it right they want to they, they believe in the product, they believe in what they're selling and they're just doing their job. They're not trying to be mean, right? So, I mean, I've, I've done similar things to be like, yeah, I like that opening. Tell me more about that, right? Or gosh, is that, give me a better opening. Let's try that again. Let's role play, right? And they'll laugh a little bit. And at the end, I'll be like, I gotta be honest with you. You should sell houses. Quit selling whatever you're selling. Let's talk about selling houses. And I've never brought anyone to KW from a call like that, but I've, you know, I've got a, people, a couple of people I'm still flirting with, right? I mean, they're just doing their job and you're doing yours. So, yeah, let's try that again. It occurred, it occurred to me to do that with her because her, she was following a script and she was doing it really well. And her very last thing was, well, so if I created an appointment with you on Friday and you found enough value, would you feel comfortable going forward with it? And I was like, oh, she's a closer. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, wow. Wow, yeah. that's a great close there. Yeah, I think I might actually. I'd like to learn more about how you think. Yeah. Right. All right. Let's go. Crystal is going to be making a care call and Melissa is going to be the uh, let's say it's, um, let's just pretend it's an old colleague. You guys used to work together a couple years ago at a previous job. Um, oh, let me define DTD2 really quickly for everyone, just so there's no confusion. Okay. DTD2 is a system that was uh, created by Tammy and one other guy who run a MAPS group coaching, um, uh, coaching opportunity uh, for MAPS that's called Never Ending Referrals. And what they were trying to do is to try to figure out how do we make certain that no one in our database slips through the cracks um, as we are just going around about our days and our weeks and our months. And so they came up with a system of calling, uh, what, like who is their call list, right? Their call list is everybody who has a last name that ends in let's just say M and S, okay? So if that was the case, then my job this week is to go through my database and I just ask a simple question. If the last name ends in S or the last name ends in M, they get a call. If the last name ends in P, that's not their week, they'll get a call some other time, right? And I'm totally focused on the ones whose last name ends in those two letters, okay? If you follow that process, um, number one, you'll talk to everybody in your database every quarter. And secondly, you will, if you're able to do this, you will defeat call reluctance which would be something like, oh, well, last time I talked to Candace, she had to get off really fast. And so I don't know if she still wants to be my friend. So uh, I don't know if I'll call her today, right? It's okay, just call her. She might wanna buy something. She might need something. She might be in a lot of pain, right? She might need to hear your voice, quite frankly, right? So just call her, okay? And use common sense. Like if she says, yeah, I just got back from a funeral, don't ask her about real estate, right? So that is DTD2. There is a calendar for DTD2 that I have uh, shared a bunch of times, and it's also in the systems document as well as the 
Google Drive. Who wants to tell me what the letters are for this week? The letters are F as in Frank, G as in George. And if you happen to have anyone in your last name or in your database who in, whose last name ends in the letter Z as in zebra, you should be texting them this week to say hi, okay? So what you would do then, uh, Crystal, this week would be yours to say, hey, I'm calling people. Oh, interestingly enough, it's perfect. Melissa's name ends in a G. Melissa's an old colleague of yours. Are you prepared to, uh, to do some role play, Crystal? You sure, can use I the, uh, the I haven't, method. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't warmed up. The granted, Melissa, uh, your last name starts with an F or a G. <laughs> okay. Well, so, she's in your database, and you got no choice. Okay, cool. So, so, so use um, the you can use ring, the Ford ring. model. You use the Ford model to, to as framework if need be. All right, go ahead, guys. Sure, sure. So, ring, ring. Uh, hello. Hello, Melissa. Uh, yeah, who, who is this? Hey, it's Crystal. How are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Crystal, Crystal who? Well, Crystal Johnson, you know, remember we met at the, um, Oh, uh, oh, yeah, oh Crystal, we used to work <laughs> together, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. So I was just checking in on you. How's the family? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, the kids, the kids are great. They're they're getting big. I, I they're actually going to be three and five now. I can't believe it. I wow, think when I worked with you, you know, I had had yeah, I just had my son. I think when we worked together, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So he's three years old now. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's and crazy how time flies. It it really does. It really does. You know, uh, are you still working over there at, you know, that place where we met? I yes, don't even remember so, where that was. Where was that? <laughs> uh, oh, God, now, now you're something big. Um, Baskin Robbins. There you go. Baskin and Robbins. Uh, when I, left, <laughs> I left Baskin Robbins, um, you know, after my son was just a few months old. I wanted to kind of be home with him for a while. Um, and, uh, after the, you know, during the pandemic, I actually started a work from home job with, um, with Coca-Cola. Okay. Fantastic. So you're working from home now and with Coca-Cola, how's that working out, especially with two small children at home? Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually great because my husband works nights, so he's able to kind of take care of them during the day. Um, and then, uh, I have the flexibility to get my daughter and then, uh, you know, my husband works at night. So, you know, we don't get much time oh, to get perfect. But that's okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm, I'm glad that everything is working out and the that, and I'm sure the children really appreciate you being both of you being there for them. I mean, that's time we can't complain that we can that we can't replace right exactly that's uh that's exactly why we're doing it it's it's kind of rough but we don't have to put them in daycare so we don't have that expense and they get to be home with us sure absolutely absolutely so i saw on your facebook page that you know that you've done a lot of traveling where's the first place you plan on going once this whole COVID thing kind of dies down and it's safe to travel um, sure. You know what? Actually, we're, we're planning to go visit some family uh, in Portugal at the beginning of the summer. Oh, wow. Portugal. That's exciting. So yeah, we figured we should just, just do it big and leave the country, right? Yeah, as long as we can do it safely, correct? Exactly, exactly. Good, good. So have you already booked your trip? Uh, no, uh, you know what? I was just looking at flights uh, the other day, but we haven't booked anything yet. Okay, okay, understand, understand. Now, by the way, um, I know you said you're working at Coca Cola. Where's your husband working these days? Um, you know, he works um, at a vet hospital over in Sandy Springs. Okay, so is he is he the vet there, or vet tech? Yeah, Tell he's me about that. There, he's one of the vets. The vet techs. Okay, beautiful. Do you know if they uh, take care of exotic birds over there? You know what they do? They, they, I'm pretty sure they take care of literally anything. 
good. Well, I'm so glad to hear that um, because I have parrots and, you know, I'm looking for a, a vet that I can trust. And it's, it's been a, it's been a hard, a hard thing since I relocated here to Georgia, finding someone that really knows about exotic birds. So definitely what's the name of the, of, of the veterinarian? Um, Dr. Smith, I think is the one that takes care of the exotic animals. Okay. Dr. Yeah. Smith, and you said that's over in Sandy Springs, is that right? Yeah, but it's right over on, um, by Abernathy on, um, Johnson Ferry. Okay, cool. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, Melissa, by the way, I'm looking for a good CPA. Do you happen to have one, F a five-star CPA? You know what? We don't, um, you know what? I typically just use one of those online programs and I, I do it myself. Okay. And how's that working out for you? I mean, we like it. I know it's not for everybody, but you know, I've, I've learned a lot over the years. So I just, I just tend to do it myself. Okay. I understand. I understand. So I'm going to be talking to a lot of people today with my intention is to reach out and just touch and uh, touch, touch bases with, you know, with everything that's going on in the world with people like yourself that I have I've lost touch with and just reconnect with them. So if I do come across a good CPA, would you like me to share that information with you? Um, I mean, yeah, I've never really thought about it. Um, I heard that it can be kind of expensive. So I don't know if it's something that I'll, that I'll really be interested in, but I mean, you could always mm. pass it along. Okay, sure, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, with, with you going to Portugal, I know that's really exciting. And with the addition of your son, now having two, ch two children, I mean, what is it that, you, I mean, gosh, it's been so long, Melissa, what is it that, that, it, that you find really passionate that you're passionate about? Uh, I mean, honestly, I'm so busy with the kids because they're so little. It's it's probably just like spending time with my family right now, trying to just sure. enjoy their little. Yes, exactly. I mean, they're an extension of us, correct? Oh yeah, geez, please. <laughs> I never believed Absolutely. my mother had my own and now I kick myself for it. Uh, so who's laughing, your mom or your dad saying, now uh, you know? <laughs> all of them. All of them. All of them. Okay, great. So family is what's most important to you. I definitely can agree and appreciate that. So listen, I'm not going to keep you. I know you've got your hands full either with work or with the little ones. Um, but before I go, there's just one last thing. Who do you know that's thinking about making a move here now or in the near future? Um, you know, who well, we've been pretty held up because of COVID and I don't, I haven't really heard of men, you know, anybody I know particularly looking to come down here. My mom was maybe thinking about it, but, um, you know, she's, my whole family's in New York, so I don't think she'll really do it. Oh boy, New York. Oof. Thank goodness you're out here. Yes. Yeah. You know, we, we love it. It's not for everybody, but we love it. I definitely understand that. Well, listen, I definitely appreciate you thinking about that, Melissa. And now that I've shared this with you, I'm sure someone's going to come come to you, come top of mind. Would you do me a favor? And when you think of that person, would you reach out to me and via phone or text and just let me know their name and number, of course, with their permission. Uh, I'd love to reach out to them and, and have an opportunity to earn their business as well as your business. Would that be okay? Um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Crystal, may I ask, I don't think I remember you telling me what exactly you're doing these days. Oh, <laughs> you know what? Thanks so much for asking. Uh, I'm with Keller Williams here in, in, in Roswell. So my oh, whole wow. intention is to, yeah, is to help people build wealth through real estate. So, you know, with so much happening in the market, you know, and the appreciation alone, I'm not sure if you, if you noticed, you know, just in the last quarter, we've appreciated gains as much as 25.8% over last year. That's oh, quite wow. a bit of equity. Isn't yeah, it? that's incredible. We actually bought a house right before the pandemic happened since our family had grown. Um, and obviously people, you know, I get, I get a letter every single day about, you know, how much money I have in my house. I mean, we love our home, so we're not looking to move anytime soon, but it's, you know, it's really good to know that, you know, 
um, maybe we made a good purchase. Yes, absolutely. Well, Melissa, you know, I'd be happy to do an equity analysis of your home. I mean, no obligation, of course, if you'd like to know. And here's why. With you having two small children and the fact that your children are everything to you and your husband, uh, you never know what that equity could do for you, for you and your family. Let me share with, with you what I mean. I was talking with a young lady and her husband at three little boys, and they bought their home just last year up in Dallas. And when I approached her, she said, well, we're thinking about selling. And I said, okay, you are. And when she said she had just bought the home last year, I was, you know, a little taken aback. And that was until I found out what was important to them. You know, they want to start a business. They had started a business and the seed money from the equity in their home, which was over a hundred thousand in just one year would be the money to help them really, really, really catapult this business. Um, so I was really excited for them. And sure enough, the property went on the market and will be closing this month and they'll be walking away with over a hundred thousand dollars. That's, that's, pretty, oh, that's wow. pretty incredible in one year's time, right? Yeah, that's, that's quite a few pennies there. So Melissa, let well, me ask you, if, if you yes. were able to, to make that kind of uh, equity, in just one year's time, would you be interested in finding out? I mean, I mean, what would that do for your family if you could do that? Yeah, you're right. I mean, that could definitely, um, you know, maybe open up some opportunities for us that we've been uh, discussing. Um, so, okay. so you know what, Crystal? Let me let me tell you this. I gotta I gotta run because I have another call. But if I could uh, message you on Facebook, would that be all right? I'll send you my address, and then um, you know maybe you could send me one of those analysis. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. And I'll follow up with you, Melissa. Thanks for your time and have a wonderful day. Great Bye now. Okay, great. Thanks, Crystal. All right, great job, you guys. Great job. I'm going to give you, um, I've, got a, I've got a bunch of feedback I want to give you. And then- I Right, because wanna... I wasn't even warmed up. I was just winging it. <laughs> That's actually part of the feedback. Okay, so, yeah. um, I, and I don't want you to, I don't want anyone to think that, um, no, no one is capable of just like, nailing every little thing, right? So somebody could listen to a call that I make today and give me just as much uh, constructive, you know, criticism or feedback or whatever. So um, I actually so I actually do this quite a bit. And the more you listen to yourself, the more you'll see where your strengths and weaknesses are. I, I, I'm trying to get out of the habit of when somebody picks up the phone, I say, Melissa, as if like there's a chance that M Melissa's number is not Melissa. Like we know, we pretty much know it's Melissa, right? So I, I think sometimes that's like a nervous initial reaction. So I'm just going to throw that out there to say like, I, I personally don't think that's necessary, although I do struggle with it myself. You did a fantastic job of repeating, right? There, it was very, very clear that you were listening intently. Um, you know, she would say something, you'd rephrase it a little bit and, and, and clarify and make sure you understood it completely. Um, I think there's probably a bit of an opportunity. Uh, and, and you got, I mean, the, the call got much better as it went on. I, I think you would agree with that. Um, there was a, I noticed there's, there's a very different pace of speaking from the two of you. And I think that um, we should probably just try to be very aware of that. Like, you know, uh, Melissa tends to talk like maybe a little faster than the average person. Crystal probably talks a little slower than the average person. So like, just be aware that the, if you're talking at the same pace, the likelihood of you building rapport is going to happen quicker, right? Mirroring and, and mirroring and matching is what you're saying. Good 100%, point. Yes. 100%. Love that you mentioned uh, referencing Facebook. I think that was very, very smart. Um, I think that, uh, there were a couple of opportunities for you to drop in real estate that you 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 didn't, right? And almost Melissa had to like drag it out of you, basically. Um, like you you could have said something subtly like, um, uh, you know, the reason why I'm looking for a great CPA is my client is you know uh, working through some you know estate challenges or something like that, and that would might push her to say. What do you mean your client? 
you know, what are you doing nowadays, right? So, or, hey, when I get the list of the, you know, uh, uh, veterinarian or the CPA or whatever, I'm going to be distributing this vendor list to my database of, you know, local homeowners um, and, and local renters so that I can make sure they have they're working with the best, right? So you could have probably subtly added something in there about why you were asking those types of questions. Right? Sure, Bill, let me interrupt just for a moment um, yeah. because I've never done the four calls before. So this is all new to me. Oh, I know. But I, what, what, but, 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 but let, let me, let me, let me, let me finish <laughs> if I may. I was under the impression from what I've looked at thus far as when you go into Ford, you don't even bring up real estate until the very end. So so again, I'm totally new. This is the first time yeah. I've ever, ever, ever tried this. I, have, I haven't tried it on a live person yet. So um, so which one is it? Is it, you I know, because a... Melissa, Mo, Mo, Melissa brought it up and she said, I didn't know what you did. And I'm like, okay, this is a new script for me. So, so you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, where do I bring this up? Because from what I've seen uh, with John Beats, for instance, on YouTube, when he goes through conversations, right. uh, script conversations or script practice, and he goes over the Ford, he doesn't talk about that. So, so help me know how to use it. I mean, I hear what you're coaching on, and I appreciate that. I'm just trying to say, okay, this is the very first time I've ever used this or mm -hmm. tried it. Um, so, so you, I'll give you, give you a couple. You talk of about up front. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, the, the truth is you, you don't really know how the conversation is going to go. So like if you get to the, like she wasn't asking you a ton of questions. So you actually, um, you approached it exactly like I would have approached it because you were clearly leading the conversation and she wasn't really like, well, how's your family? Well, what's your new job? Oh, well, how's your job? Like, if she had gone back and like kind of traded those questions with you, then you probably would have had a better opening to bring up real estate faster. Um, I think the, the, the a, a possible reservation to, um, to waiting until the very end uh, to bring it up. And, and again, this is just my opinion, right? In, in some situations I might do it this way in some situations I might do it a little differently, but it, it could be interpreted as kind of an, uh, that everything that happened prior to you feeling comfortable enough to bring that up might might be a, a less authentic, so to speak. It's like, okay, let, let's mm. just do a little small talk and then I'll finally hit you with what I really called about, mm. right? Okay. And so you just have, yeah, I mean, you. there's no like one way to do it, right? H had Melissa asked you some more questions, you probably, it would the conversation would have gone totally differently and you probably would have gotten more uh, comfortable just like you did along the way. Um, when you, you you asked, yeah, the, I mean, I understand that you were almost purposely not bringing it up, um, but there were probably a couple of moments where it would have been reasonable, right? And, and not okay. and not okay. okay. Um, I loved okay. how you um, you were very intentional at the end. Uh, equity analysis, I loved that offer. Love sto the stories you shared. I think that's critical. Um, I loved how you didn't just say, oh, the market's busy or something, right? You said 25.7 or something, right? You knew the exact number. I thought that was incredible. Okay, you've got great use of tie downs, right? You're, set, you're doing a lot of correct. Isn't that right? Wouldn't you think so? These kind of words, fantastic job there. Um, I think that the a, a, a really good takeaway from this conversation. And, and I, by the way, thank you for being, you know, vulnerable. We're, uh, the coaching that I'm giving you applies to everybody, right? So I appreciate you being the, uh, the guinea pig this morning. Um, the, I think the takeaway here is that we don't want to practice on our clients. That's we right. We want to practice right. in, in private, right? Because right. if you consider the let's say the first three or four minutes of that call as practice. Yeah, it was painful. <laughs> it was painful. Right? Um, you know, she, she was uh, not as sharp as she was in minutes, you know, six and seven or whatever. And I'm sorry. I was trying to act like I couldn't remember you with my mom brain. <laughs> well, that's oh, okay. No, well, no, thing... no. no. And, and the reality is when I'm going to be dialing through my phone, it's going to be just, it could very well be that. So exactly. I appreciate exactly. you kind of, kind of throwing me off because yeah that's probably going to happen 
right? So if we practice with our, with our friends and our peers and our, and our accountability partner or with ourselves, then get, it's game time when you're with your clients. We don't want to practice on the clients that we spend a lot of time and energy and, and heartache trying to accumulate. You see what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, that's just one more piece of evidence to, to make a recommendation to each and every one of you, which is let's decide um, the ways in which we do want to kind of intentionally go out into the community, right? Do we want to do it by calling FISBOs or expireds or circle prospecting or through technology or open houses or whatever? Let's get really, really, really good at the um, those conversations, right? Those questions that are going to move the process forward and uh, let's practice them. So when we're, when we're on stage, we nail it. Um, so thank you, Crystal. That was, that was really good. Thank you, Melissa. That, that was good too. And like, you don't, you don't like call somebody. I wouldn't be like, Hey, Melissa, I'm about to make a sales call. So I'm going to send you over our script so you can read it exactly like I want you to read it. Like that doesn't happen, right? You're the one with the script and they're the ones whose day was interrupted. So um, uh, I would always go in with, and, and you were prepared for this, this is what you did, go in with the uh, uh, kind of the desire to share some cool piece of valuable information. Hey, did you know that home prices went from this to this? Or, hey, did you know that there's a new loan program out there? Hey, you know, have you heard about, you know, uh, the fact that you know, FHA doesn't count, you know, student loan or count it differently. And then all of a sudden now you can afford to buy more home or something where you've got a handful of different things that you can share and when appropriate, you could drop it into the conversation. If you were to call her again in a couple of months, I, and the conversation went exactly like it did this time, I think she would probably be like a little reluctant to have like that conversation at the beginning because she's probably waiting for you to like drop a sales pitch in there, right? So just be a little cognizant of that or maybe go out of your way to, to help her or give her something between now and your next call, if that makes sense. So no, it, it does make sense. I mean, cause it's all about, you know, the, the intent is to, to be, you know, um, to leave a lasting impression and to also be effective. Um, so I, I'm still not clear on if I'm gonna be doing the Ford care call and I call you, Bill, or Melissa, or anyone else for that matter, when and where do I, I mean, if you can role play with me, Bill, and, and flip it around and show me how you would do this, this, this same script, if we have time, I don't know if we do or not. Um. Yeah, let's yeah. let's let's put you let's on the spot. Let's do it for a minute. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm now the woman. person. This is what happens. I'm now. When you go to I'm bowl. now. I'm now. I'm now the person. So that you're gonna call and, and do a Ford care call. Hello. Me. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Who is this? Uh, wait. You're calling. Oh, I'm the me. other. Sorry, I'm the other way around. Yeah, you're the Bye you're then. the you're the <laughs> agent now. So let's hear how you're gonna do it. All right. Hello. Or you say hello. You got me all. Hello. You're supposed to ring, ring. <laughs> okay. Crystal, Hello. how are you today? Hey, I'm doing good. Who's this? This is Bill Linkwald. Uh, I don't know if you remember me. We worked together at, uh, at Baskin Robbins a couple of years ago. How are you? Oh, Bill. Hey, how are you? How's the uh, family? Ah, uh, thank you for asking. Uh, family's good. I don't know if you remember my, I had two little kids and they're yeah, uh, nine and six now. So they're, they're all I grown do. up. I and do having fun and got you know funny personalities and we're, we're just having a good time over here how about you how's your family uh doing well doing very well my girls are uh, both out on their own now and i'm an empty nester so trying to find you know this new this this new life here what to do with all this free time all right so are, are you working or are you are you taking time off of work what what how you feel in your days you know, I, I'm just pretty much just doing my own thing. I still write. I uh, haven't published anything as of yet, but I'm still working on it. There's a book in me. Okay. Are you going to tell me what it's about? <laughs> no, uh, not yet. Not yet. It's still in the works. Okay. Okay. So um, 
have you, uh, I know you, you, if I remember correctly, you used to do a lot of traveling. Are you still doing some traveling or have you gotten back into that mm. since COVID or? Well, I, I'm lucky. I'm trying to book a trip right now to Costa Rica. So uh, I can't wait. I can't oh, wait. Oh, wow. I have a, a, a client that just actually got back from Costa Rica. They're having a great time. Yes, absolutely. I, Where I in Costa Rica are you going to Are you going to be? Uh, there's a beautiful uh, Thousand Island, thousand acre retreat that I'm looking at where you have open uh, cabins up above looking over the ocean so uh, it's, it's it's what I'm what I'm dreaming about right now sounds, so sounds like a cool to place traveling. to write uh, yes absolutely very inspiring and to completely immersed in nature wow okay so I got to get that connected with my uh, with my client that was just got back maybe I can give you some restaurant recommendations or you know, uh, make, make sure you see a, a new site or two. Is that a place that you go to often? No, I haven't been. Uh, I wanted to go right before COVID hit. I wanted to go over there and stay for two months. And after COVID hit, everything just got splattered to, like, <laughs> to the wall, on the wall. So no, no, not yet. So this time it'll probably just be for seven to 10 days. Okay. Are you still living over in, uh, in Smyrna? I know that's kind of, that's where we work together. Is that you were living in that area before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't moved, not yet. Okay, and you you own that home, or are you renting currently? No, actually, I'm renting that home. You know, okay. as you know, I came out here when my mother got sick, and I had no intentions of coming to Georgia. So, you know, I've kind of kind of stayed on on the fence there because I'm not sure if I'm staying, if I'm going, and uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm still renting. Okay. Well, I, I don't know if, I, if I've shared this with you, if you've, you've seen it on you know, LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a full-time real estate agent now and uh, you know, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm able to help a lot of buyers and a lot of sellers. And there's just so much opportunity out there. If, if there's ever a, a question that you have about real estate, if you wanted to sit down and uh, talk with me about you know, the process or how to prepare yourself or you know, how to take advantage of all the opportunities in the marketplace, I'd be more than happy to uh, to, to sit down and, you know, take you to coffee or take you to lunch or something like that. Is, is that something you, you have some questions about now by chance? Um, yeah, I've kind of toyed with the idea because I'm throwing away so much money in rent. You know, I just didn't know if it made sense for me to have a rental in the event I do leave and go back to Southern California. Um, you know, but yeah, I, I guess it, it couldn't hurt. It Perfect. Hurt. So, uh, what's better, breakfast or coffee? Um, let's do coffee. How about Thursday? Thursday. I love this new little shop up the road. Do you want to meet good. at the Thousand Hills or whatever? Sure. Actually, it's a spot I'm not familiar with. Yeah, let's do that. All right, I'll send you all the info. Okay, so that was yeah. good. You see, you you didn't. I kind of turned that a little bit more business, a little quicker. You did. Um, you left the Ford, you left the Ford template. <laughs> I, I did a little bit because, um, well, we're a little close on time, but th the reason why I, um, what she has a lot of stuff. She had a lot of like things already out there. And mm -hmm. so I was looking for a way to kind of make her, I, I was looking for a way to kind of simplify things for her. Right. And I was seeing right. if there was an opportunity involved from a real estate standpoint. Right. And asking them, hey, are you still in that area? That is a that's a soft pitch. Right. I mean, that is that's not salesy at all. Right. That's something that a regular old person might ask. Right. Um, make sure when you tell them that you're a real estate agent. Right. That it is. Uh, don't say like, oh, my gosh, I'm slammed. Right. Because then they'll be like, well, I guess you're too busy for me. You're too busy for my friend. Who right. Wants to buy. right. Right. You right, can talk right. about how uh, how much fun you're having. Right. How much you're learning, how exciting it is, how many friends you've met, how many awesome properties you've seen, you know, a stat about the market. Oh, my gosh. You know, interest rates are probably the, lo the, the lowest they've been in in a long time. Like, have you have you ever sat down with a mortgage professional and just kind of crunch the numbers and see what that might look like? Well, no. OK, well, I'd love to make that introduction for you. Right. Um, I, I guess the takeaway here is there's really no, like, th th there's no exact way to do it. Um, but 
I I also um, I probably could have spent a little bit more time on oh well where are the kid where do the kids move to, right or you know what are they studying or you know these kind of things I, I probably could have spent a few more minutes there, um, you know you you said something to the effect of like you essentially said you're not working. Um, so I went straight to, well, how are you spending your time rather than what, what, what was your job or what do you want? Do you want to find a job? Right. That's particularly mm -hmm. sensitive with women because, you know, they, sometimes they are actually a lot of times they kind of discredit themselves for being like a mother. Right. Mm -hmm. so you say, well, what is your job? And they're like, oh, I don't have a job. I'm just a stay-at-home mom. That's a tough one right there. Right. That we all know that that's a hell of a job. That's like four jobs all in one, right? So, so okay. a, a different way to ask that question is, you know, how do you spend your time? The hope is that therefore, once she got done telling me how she spends her time, she would ask me, how do, how do I spend my time? You didn't ask me that. Hey, so I found a way to bring it up. Right. Bill, I've got a question. Candace, are you on the line? She is. Okay. Um, I'm here. Okay. What about my tone? Can you coach me on my tone and my voice, uh, the volume of my voice and things like that? So you, so the volume, so we were talking yesterday because my, I was telling Crystal that my husband used to have restaurants and what he knew is that when it was busy, the soft-spoken servers didn't get great tips because nobody could hear them and they had to strain to hear them. So he taught them to stand at one corner of the of the restaurant and project their voice to the other corner so that when it was busy, they had a business voice, which is much louder and stronger. And then they could go back to their normal soft-spoken voice when they were being personal. So Crystal and I were talking about that yesterday. And so, yeah, so your tone is, you're still very soft, but gentle. Um, you sound very, I mean, I, I, I was very like, soothed by listening to you which I know you've said people have said before so I was soothed I didn't I didn't feel like you were being aggressive or pushy or anything like that so um I thought it was fine um Melissa was a little bit she sounded a little bit more busy um so I, I might have <laughs> yeah I might have I might have uh, punched up my my pace a little bit um but okay. you know of course that, that, that's something if you sit down and warm up you have consciousness about and when you're just called on mm -hmm. to role play and wing it it's it's a little more difficult i don't know that i would have i would have thought about you know it's easy to sit back and watch somebody so i'm not sure i would have thought about that either until it was over and somebody said yeah. something but I, I thought your i thought your tone was soothing and non-aggressive i i would, I would agree with that completely I would agree with right. that completely. I, I, I know I'm not aggressive, but I'm wondering, you know, and I'm so glad you brought that up, Candace, yesterday, because, uh, yeah, I'm really good. I've, I've had compliments on the voice all the, all the time for what I could be using it for. But in this case, I want to be able to connect and to persuade and to convince. And I'm wondering, you know, what I need to work on differently so that I can you know, help move people along that journey more effectively on the phone. I'm very good face-to-face -face doing it, but on the phone is where I want to excel. Yeah, I think, I think, um, I'll say, can I say something real quick? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes. Please. Um, so, so yeah, I think like, like Bill said, like the call got so much better towards the end. And I feel like at the end, you definitely started to match my pace a little better and I genuinely like if I really put myself in that role I genuinely wanted you to send me an equity analysis and like I genuinely wanted to have another conversation about that but like in the beginning I feel like like she said she was so not prepared and it was like a total wing in the beginning like I think a more fair judgment was where you ended up at the at the end of the call yeah we're not we shouldn't judge at all yeah. right? And, well, and I mean, that's not a fair word. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just going to say she was working out. She was just working it out in the beginning and she totally got her step in there. And wow. I just want to say, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person and you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. And I tell I, everybody the story that I was making a hundred calls one day because I was, it was I didn't know about bold, but I would, I decided I was going to call a hundred people and I'd gotten so many hangups. I'd gotten so many, not interested. I'd gotten so many 
so many just voicemails. And so I was finally somebody answered and I was just like, I was, I was defeated. And I got in my little girl voice that, that this, my defensive voice. And I was like, hi, is this Larry? And he said, yes. And I go, hi, um, I understand you're looking for a home in, um, in, in this Alpharetta. And he goes, yes. And I said, um, and it was like, like a big price point. It was like 2 million something. And I said, um, would you like to meet on Saturday and interview me? And he goes, you know what? I would. And he's become one of my best clients and we're getting ready to do some big deals together. <laughs> they, I've done, I've, he was one of my luxury clients and, and we've become friends and fa- they call me family now. Wow. And I'm either, I feel wow. the same. Way. So I feel like you can't say the wrong thing to the right. Now I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And um, no, what, I, I, what, I, what I, I hear you saying, say, Candace, like, what I hear you saying, mm-hmm. and I appreciate you saying, what I hear you saying, and I appreciate you sharing that, is just make the freaking call. <laughs> you <laughs> know, you. just make the yeah. freaking call. Not only that, but don't give up, you know, because you never know that one more call who you may, it may be the right call. Uh, Mike Ferry used to say, you could call enough people and throw up on them. Eventually, someone's going to have you over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could literally call and say, hey, I'm thinking about selling you a $10 bill for uh for twenty dollars and if you call enough people somebody would be like i'd like to meet with you to learn about that right Right. i I think um it's very clear by the way uh that you have a quite a bit of sales at sales training right you are you're using a lot of language skills which um you probably are just using because you're so used to using them things like to so that i can make sure i heard that correctly and you repeat back or what i hear you saying is i mean that is that's classic sales stuff, right? So you 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 know what you're doing, and I appreciate your desire to get even better. Um, yep. What I what I would say is you you become convincing and trustworthy and um, uh, uh, inspiring by building trust. You build trust by building rapport. You build rapport by um, making them feel comfortable around you, right? And there's many ways to do that. A great way to do that is by mirror and matching, right? Which is so if you are, um, and you're, you're basically going to feel like an actor all day, right? If you go make 50 calls, the first person you speak to is going to talk really fast. And so you should probably speed up a little bit. The next person is going to talk a lot slower and you should try to match that a little bit. And then you might find somebody fast again. And, and you're just going back and forth and you're, you're essentially trying, you're like almost testing things out mid conversation to see, hey, does this make it, does this put us into tighter rapport or weaker rapport, right? So you, you are, you are far beyond a skill level than you're probably giving yourself credit for. Mm -hmm. And uh, just sort of perfectly clear on that. I I think the, the, one of the main things you could probably do right now is just pay attention to pace, right? I mean, you're, you would, a a high S uh, would fall in love with you in five seconds. A high D might say, uh, okay, so what are you trying to say? What are you trying to get at? You know, just tell me, right? So you, you, you're going to continue to re- refine this over time, but fantastic job. I uh, appreciate everyone that, that, that listened, um, that participated. Anyone have any, any, any comments on it? Anything that they caught that they'd like to, to comment on? Um, Bill, do you think she could have worked in real estate early on when Melissa was talking about working from home and having the two small kids? Um, I know that that's come up in some of our role plays, my role plays with Ebony, um, where, you know, where are you working? You know, when you're working at home, are you at the kitchen table or do you have an office? Could she have worked in real estate maybe there somehow? Yeah, I think the biggest question is, does, did Melissa... Are they close enough, or does does or does Crystal believe that Melissa knows she's a real estate agent, right? So you might have to like you got to kind of figure that out a little bit, right? You may say, oh my gosh, a lot of my clients are are working from home right now. You know, what's your favorite part about working from home? And you keep dropping these ideas of like, hey, I've got clients. Are you interested in asking me about the fact that I have clients, right? And then eventually it might come up, but I probably wouldn't go to the well, how do you like your home? Do you love it? Do you want to sell it? Right. What we're finding generally in, 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 as COVID has progressed 
is a lot of people are really loving their home. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, this home's too big. Or, oh my gosh, my home is too small. Or, oh my gosh, I can't live with my husband, wife, whatever anymore, right? We're done, right? So you might say, gosh, after, you know, a year and a half of COVID, you know, what's your feeling on your home these days? Do you love it? Do you not love it as much? You know, talk to me about that. Um, could you have brought it up earlier? Sure. Could the rapport have, you know, gotten better or worse? Sure. I mean, it's just a total crapshoot, right? I, you gotta, you gotta use common sense a little bit to determine when you can kind of drip it in there. Can I ask a question? This is Stacey Davis. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm off on my phone. I don't know how to find the hand button, but, um, but thanks. So I'm a high D. So the whole time I was thinking, um, like if I was Melissa, I would be thinking, why are you calling me? Right. I just want people to get to the point. So my question is, um, should I be practicing with maybe like Crystal? I'm not sure if she might be a high I. I'm just wondering, should we be practicing with people who are opposite of us? You know what I mean? To get relaxed with different styles. Does that make sense? What yeah, I'm trying I, to say? I think, <laughs> I think that is, uh, I don't think necessarily you should exclusively practice with people like that, but I certainly think that seeking out people that um, have different communication styles from you will absolutely be helpful, of course because you're gonna deal with Thank people you. all out there, you know, of, of all different uh, styles, right? I'm a high D too. I would have been like, Crystal, what are you calling me for? Well, I, and I wonder if I might've even said that as the person, like, can you tell me why you're calling? <laughs> like, I just, I want, so, so I understand how to approach someone like that, but then I'm not gonna be as good. I may, I may offend somebody maybe that that's not ready to get right to the point. But if you're calling them and you don't have an appointment, don't you think most people, no matter what style they are, are wondering like, why are you calling me? I don't. I think you see the world well, through no, one, that's my one question, tunnel. I guess. <laughs> I think you see the world through one tunnel, honestly. And so you're probably just like me. You might have a harder time kind of trying to think about how others might react, or you you seem to be shocked when others might think of that differently. I I think ultimately you have every right, just like anyone else that would respond this way to say, hey, Crystal, you know, uh, I'm, I'm kind of busy, you know, any, any particular reason why you're calling? And I think Crystal needs to have a response where she can in 10 seconds get straight to the point, right? Hey, I'm reaching out to a lot of my friends today, um, you know, to, I'm, I'm growing my vendor database. I'd like to share some information of great five-star vendors with the people that I'm close with. And uh, once I get done, I'm gonna share it with all my real estate clients. Um, I'll, I'll just keep you two more seconds. You know, do you have, have any real estate questions right now? I'm working with a lot of buyers and sellers, lots of opportunity out there. Is there anything I can help you with today? And they're like, oh, thank you so much for telling me, right? So Crystal, don't be surprised if somebody, you know, comes back at you like that and please be prepared with a get straight to the point. How can I help you, you know, type of response? Tracy. All right. Um, hi, yes, um, this was so good. I really enjoyed this. But my thing is, um, so if I'm going to make a phone call to someone, um, I'm going to just introduce myself in the beginning and tell them, like, for instance, I've been in Mary Kay all these years. So when I typically make phone calls, whether it's a new somebody I warm chattered, a referral, an old client, I would start off with saying, hi, um, Chris. So this is Tracy with Mary Kay Cosmetics. How are you doing today? And then I will kind of go from there and, and, you know, ask about the family and what they're doing and that kind of thing, and then kind of get to why I'm calling. <laughs> well, that's essentially what Crystal did, which I think is, a, is an appropriate approach. Um, the, what you need to be prepared for is for somebody like Stacy just alluded to, 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 you know, to kind of stop you in your cordial, cordial tease, if that's a word, and ask you to get straight to the point. Or you might have somebody that is, has been waiting for a conversation like this all day and will keep you on the phone for six hours if you let them, right? So you just need to have that, you need, you need to be prepared to respond quickly. You need, to resp you need to be prepared to get off the phone quickly if it's going in, in a direction that's not helpful for you. And um, you, know, you need to be prepared with, with, with value to share. Crystal. Right. Um, one, one other thing, that's why I would lead off with who I am and like what I do. So if I call and say, hi, this is Tracy with Keller Williams, 
then I would think that this is where the conversation is going. Well, I wrong. think uh, it depends on the type of call you're making, right? If you're calling, right. this, is, this is yeah, this is this is a call to people that may know you or may not know you. They're people. These are care calls, and you only make care okay. calls to people that know you. It, so you it, wouldn't yeah. start off and call your friend and say, "Hey, Bill, this is Crystal at Keller Williams." Of course, I know you're at right. Keller Williams, yeah. or you know, unless. So that's the only reason why I can see why that would not be appropriate because of the type of call I'm making. If right. I call that's, someone that didn't. The script right, that's what I was different. saying. It depends on who you're calling. Like, right, you right, know. right, 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 right. So for the forward. So Bill, I wanted to go back to what Stacy had brought up, which I thought was a great point because it's something that I'm definitely cognizant of okay. that, and I'm hoping that you can do this for, for the group that, you know, to help us all understand the disc better so yeah. that we can, you know, Yes, I just jumped on, not warmed up when I got on with Melissa, so I wasn't really hearing her pace. So I didn't have the opportunity up front to mirror and match because I was still trying to figure out what the hell is this for thing, excuse my French. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was caught up in my head and I wasn't present with Melissa to hear her pace and tonality. But I wanna get better and it's, I heard Stacy bring that up too and I'm sure others may feel that way. Can you do something to help us as a group get better with recognizing who we are as a personality and how to discern who we're speaking to so that we can can sell to them in the way that they want to be sold talk yes. to them in the way that they want to be talked to? Can you do that for us? Hundred percent. So we we do have some okay. videos on that we've done that type of class a disc class. I can share them in the big group, and then we can certainly uh, you know plan another one as well. Um, there's lots of resources online of like, you know, for example, like a D communicates this way. They're afraid of this. They're scared of this. They like this to happen. They don't like this to happen, right? So that you can, and, and these are some ways that you might recognize a high D or recognize a high I. Um, the, the takeaway here should not be, let me change my, my uh, the, the way that I tend to communicate. The takeaway should be, I um, need to always be evaluating my performance with people of all different types of uh, personality assessment or personality types of, of cultures, of races, of all that stuff. So like you're, you're, I'm not telling you to like never talk the way you talk. I'm saying you should just continue to learn about how your tendencies might affect others and ways to improve the um, the uh, speed in which you might build rapport based on your tendencies. It doesn't mean you have to like scrap everything you do, obviously not, right? But just be aware of how your communication style might be impacting others, right? And Bill, um, just make one quick suggestion. If you can record yourself when you're making calls, you'll, find, you'll, you'll, you'll learn a lot about yourself. Yeah, like sometimes I'll go back and watch these videos of, of me and I'll see things that I tend to do, right? Mm -hmm. like, like I just said, it. like I say right a lot and I'm trying to fix that, right? <laughs> I think if you guys all turned on your videos, maybe I wouldn't say right as much because I can't tell whether you're paying attention or not. Thank you. Um, okay, we're way beyond time. Uh, again, um, I hope this is this was helpful for everyone. Um, my, my plan at the moment, oh my gosh, all I had to do is ask. This is amazing. I should have just asked at the beginning. See, uh, oh, this is like a dream come true. Um, uh, so, um, what was I going to say? So Thursdays, my plan for, for, for the foreseeable future is to continue to do some of this. Remember every Tuesday from 10 to 11 prior to the team meeting, uh, Melissa is, is here. Um, and either Candace or I will be here as well. Uh, just to make, make ourselves available to role play, to work, you know, to, to give each other feedback. And, and um, I think it's safe to say that we're all learning and this is, we're not judging, you know, I'm, I'm, the only judgment I'm doing of you is that I'm judging you on the fact that you're committed to your business or I'm judging you on the fact that you're not committed to your business. That's the only judgment I'm doing. Okay. So for everyone here today, you have been judged. I'm proud of you. You are committed to your business and you're getting better every day. Okay, that's that's the only judgment we should be making. Is that fair? All right, beautiful. 
You guys have an awesome day today. Oh, wait, wait. Do we have two seconds to go around? Let's do one things. All right, Candace, what's your one thing today? I am going to make growth calls and try and grow our office and grow my profit share. Beautiful. Cool. Lisa, what would you what is your one thing that you're looking to do today? I had an appointment with a listing. Love with it. a lister, yes. All right. Tracy, one thing. What are you focused on today? Um, so yesterday I was watching, started watching the Gene Rivers. Yeah, that'll blow your mind, huh? So yes, I'm mm -hmm. I'm going to read this, um, watch the second half, and continue reading. Oh yeah. Until I get my contact list back from the Anza. Beautiful, beautiful, love that. You're gonna be a totally different human being tomorrow. <laughs> All right, Donna Patrick, what you up to today? Um, to start my spreadsheets to track my profit share recruits and also my referral partners around the country. Excellent. Do you have a goal for how many referral partners you're going to secure today? Well, for today, probably I'll shoot for 25 today. I'm going to do 25 today because I need to have 25 at 25 least... referral partners into your database today. Yes, because I already wow. have several in command and I'm going to put them into my uh, my spreadsheet. So my goal is to have 25 and then get at least another 25 by next Thursday. I got to tell you, that's a very impressive goal. Good work. Yeah, I probably wow. have 12 in command as it is. So it's not too, too high of a goal today. Love I think that. I can do it. I know you can do it. Lorinda. Two things, uh, continue to make calls. So probably hit my 20 mark calls for today. And then the referral agent in Macon um, is gonna take all my clients out on Saturday to see a couple of uh, houses. My client's actually driving down to Macon on Saturday. So she told me I need to find her a couple of more houses to show make it worth the while. So those are the two things. Excellent. Crystal, what's your one thing for today? Mine is to call, make my 25 calls, and that'll be a series of calling my second touch behind the golden letters that I sent out to one of my farms, and also the D2, D2 DT <laughs> calls. So that's how I'm going to uh, separate it, calling both of those groups. Excellent. Excellent. Stacy, what are you working on today? Sorry, I had to, my husband was talking to me. Um, um, I am getting ready to meet a friend for lunch that I haven't talked to in over uh, almost a year. Okay. Um, so I'm reconnecting with her and um, going to the training. I think it's on Legion this afternoon at the office, which is something I'm really struggling with and need to understand better. Um, and then I'm going to an event with about 700 women tonight. <laughs> so I'm hoping to make some good connections today. All right, at that event, this goes for everybody. It's much, much more important. I'd rather get three people's contact information than give 700 business cards out. Thank you. Absolutely. You it's all about quality, right? right? It's all about Wait, getting their information, get, get their information. And then if you have to, when you get their card or whatever, write down, we talked about the sun just started Georgia Tech, right? Oh my gosh. This one was, you know, it's just uh, opened up a bakery and, you know, we talked about, you know, specialty coffee or something, right? Find out something unique about that conversation that you remember because you were listening and offer something to support them and whatever is important to them. Get their information. Awesome. Yeah, okay, more questions than you talk. What, what was the last thing you said, Candace? Ask more questions and listen more than you talk. Way more than you talk. All right, Jaleesa. Yes. What would what is your one thing for today? Um, I did say that I was gonna go. Um, well, try to set an appointment with. Um, oh, I already asked you. The list. Yeah, but I I'm am gonna go to the door like and again. Great job. Uh, okay. Who have I not asked? Lakira. You somebody moved around, so you moved you moved to a different square. Sorry about that, Lakira. What are you up to today? Um. So the first thing I have to do is finish up my calls that I started yesterday. I'm trying to do at least 120 contacts a day 
just because the dialer dials so many different numbers for one contact. So I want to finish that up. I got a few appointments started for next week based on those calls. And then um, I was actually listening and thinking maybe I should start doing some agent uh, relationships uh, nationwide also. Beautiful. I love that. Um, I just had my assistant do some research on what cities, uh, where people are moving to Atlanta from, right? And she made a list for me of like 10 or 15 cities. And maybe those are the cities that you can call and say, hey, it looks like a lot of people are moving to Atlanta from Dallas. Let me go meet some area, there's some uh, local agents in Dallas, right? If we're going to make the calls, we may as well call the right people, right? Right, yeah. Crystal, did, I didn't call on you, did I? Or did you I? did, but please, oh, gotcha. why don't you share that, share, share, that, share that list with us so that we can reach out to contact as well, Bill. See, we got a, we got a real bold woman here, guys. Okay. Bill, what's oh, your yeah. one thing? It, 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 it's not like we're going to call the same agent you're going to call. <laughs> and even Don't forget, say, yeah. we need to do that for bold anyway. She told us to add uh, referral agents for all 50 states to that list. Oh, I missed that. Finishing. That. Thank you, Donna. All right, Welcome. I'm going to send you guys the research right now, all for free, okay? Bill, what's your one thing? I, I figured Candace was going to, or uh, um, Crystal was going to ask me that. Um, my one thing is I'm going to set four appointments today. Four appointments. That's my one thing, and I'll tell you exactly when I set the fourth one. So uh, I appreciate everyone. Uh, being on video today, hanging out late. I apologize for uh, this running a little long. However, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, the, the extra time that we spent was uh, that you guys learned a lot from it. And um, I'm just gonna encourage you, like, look around. These are the people that are gonna start crushing it, right? And so spend some time with these people, practice with them, study with them, ask them what they're learning, ask them what they're doing well, ask them where they're, where they're struggling, right? That's one of the parts of this of this little group to uh, to support one another, and um, you know, part of the culture of KW is we, we share we share what we learn, right? There's plenty of business out there, right? I'll tell you anything I've learned. Okay. All right, guys, have a wonderful Thank day. Thank you so much, Bill. Have a wonderful day. Bye.